Hello guys, let's talk more about molecular shapes. Let's see what happens when we have five electron groups around the central atom. So in that case, we are going to get a shape that is called trigonal bipyramidal. It looks a little bit complicated, but it's actually pretty simple. Remember, we are going to have three atoms that are in the equatorial positions, and they are in one plane, and two more atoms in the axial positions. Okay, what is the simplest way to imagine this type of molecular geometry? Well, Let's take the trigonal planar geometry that we know really, really well, right? We know that the bond angles are 120 degrees. And these are actually the atoms in the equatorial position in a trigonal bipyramidal shape. So how do I add the axial positions? Well, I can simply add two more atoms. 90 degrees from the plane of the trigonal planar shape. Okay, one and another one on the bottom. So we are going to have the two axial atoms. They actually show a linear structure, the two axial atoms, and the three equatorial atoms show a trigonal planar structure. Okay, so I hope this makes sense. Make some marshmallow structures for yourself so it's going to be easier to see. All right, now what happens? Which of these atoms will get replaced when I have a lone electron pair? Okay, so which of these atoms will get replaced when I have a lone electron pair? Well, remember, these are the two axial atoms and these are the three equatorial atoms. And it's pretty simple. When we have an electron pair, we are going to remove one of the equatorial atoms and that will give us a seesaw structure. Okay, I hope it's visible. Then if we have two of the lone pairs, then we are going to get a T-shaped structure again by removing one of the equatorial atoms. And when we have three lone electron pairs, we will remove the third equatorial atom and we are going to get a simple linear shape, okay? So let's take a look at some examples. When we have, for example, phosphorus pentafluoride, which is shown right here, we are going to have one, two, three, four, five electron groups around the central atom. And because there are no lone electron pairs, we are going to see this trigonal bipyramidal structure. Now, if we have one, two, three, four electron groups plus an electron group, which is a lone pair, we are going to remove one of the equatorial atoms. So in this case, it would be right here to put the lone electron pair there. And we are going to get a seesaw structure. And this is the structure of sulfur tetrafluoride. Now, when we remove two of the atoms and replace them with lone electron pairs, just like in chlorine trifluoride, we are going to get the T-shaped structure, right? So we would have a lone pair right here and another lone pair right there. And when we remove three of the atoms to replace them with lone electron pairs, just like here in xenon difluoride, we are going to see this linear structure with a bond angle of 180 degrees. All right, I hope this makes sense. Now, what happens when we actually have six electron groups around the central atom? Well, we are going to get a structure that is called octahedral. Now, you may ask, hey, why is it called octahedral? Octa is eight, but we have only six electron groups. It actually comes from the octahedron, okay? That shape, as you can see, actually has eight faces, okay? And that's from where the name of the octahedral structure is coming from, because octahedron has eight faces. All right, so what is the simplest way to imagine the octahedral structure? Let's start step by step. 
let's take a planar structure, okay? So this is a planar structure and it's a square planar structure, right? So we have four bonds. There are 90 degree angles between these bonds and each bond is in the same plane and here is the central atom. And how do we add two more atoms? Well, we just have to add them in a linear way on this side. Okay, and on the other side, let me see. Here we go. All right, so this is the octahedral structure. Now, we don't have in this case equatorial or axial atoms because if I just start moving this structure, it looks the same way, it doesn't matter from which side you are looking at it. And what's cool about the octahedral structure is that for some reason molecules tend to have a maximum of two lone electron pairs with this octahedral electron group arrangement. So, which of the atoms would you take down first? to replace them with lone electron pairs doesn't matter because the structure is completely symmetrical, right? So if I just take this off and I imagine that here I have a lone electron pair, I'm going to get a square pyramidal structure because it kind of looks like a pyramid. Okay, and remember that actually if we have an electron pair right here, it pushes a little bit on these bonds, right? And then, if I want to take off another atom to replace it with a lone electron pair, I would take this one off because that would give the most space for all the other atoms and the lone electron pair. So I ended up with a square planar structure, the same geometry with which I started with at the beginning. Okay, it's a little bit wonky because it's marshmallows, but I think you get the point. So what are the examples? For example, sulfur hexafluoride, this molecule right here is going to have an octahedral structure. As we can see, it has one, two, three, four, five, six electron groups around the central atom and no lone electron pairs. Then bromine uh, pentafluoride here will have one, two, three, four, five bonds and a lone electron pair right there. It's going to have the square pyramidal structure, which looks like kind of a pyramid. And then we are going to have a square planar structure when we have xenon tetrafluoride. We have one, two, three four electron groups which are in bonds and two more electron groups as lone pairs okay make some marshmallow structures and i hope it makes sense see you in the next video